Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this unit, we're going to start a new hypothesis. This is a hypothesis called X-bar theory. It's a revision to our theory of phrase structure rules. Remember, we're doing science, and science says you start with a hypothesis, you look at some more data, and you revise your hypothesis. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's do a quick review of what we have talked about up to now. We notice that there are important syntactic units that we call constituents, and we can test for those constituents. So for example, we can see if you can replace them, if you can delete them, if you can move them, if they can stand alone. And we came up with a particular hypothesis about how we structure those, and that's by making use of phrase structure rules. Um, we observed there are a couple of little um, additional things that we have to add on to phrase structure rules. Uh, for example, we have the principle of modification, which says that you always attach stuff in so that phrases are close to the heads they modify. Um, and we also looked at um, the structural properties of the trees we can draw with these rules, these hierarchical tree structures, we looked at um, dominance, precedence, and C command, and we looked in depth at one particular approach to, um, to what are called, what's called the binding theory, which is the relationships between nouns, that makes clear reference to this hierarchical constituent structure and the rules that create it and the structural relations that govern it. Now, Phrase structure rules are actually a pretty good hypothesis. They do some important things. They capture constituency relationships. They explain uh, the distribution and order of categories. So they tell you that certain elements appear in certain positions. So noun phrases appear in the subject position. Verb phrases in English appear after that. Um, they explain the modification relationships. Um, using the principle of modification. So they also allow us to explain things like ambiguity. So for example, prepositional phrases that can attach to a noun phrase or can attach to a verb phrase and give an ambiguity to the sentence are predicted by our phrase structure rules. And they allow us to capture things like C command and other kinds of relationships. So whatever we do, when we do science and revise our phrase structure rules, we want to keep these things. These are, these are good results. But we're going to see that there are occasions where um, the phrase structure rules we have proposed um, make the wrong predictions. So let's look at an example here. Um, here's our phrase structure rule for noun phrases. Noun goes to optional determiner, any number of optional adjective phrases, and noun, any number of optional prepositional phrases. And of course, there's other stuff that can go in it too. But for our purposes, that will suffice. And that will generate a tree for a noun phrase like the tall student of physics with the red hair that looks like the one you see on your screens right now. We call this a flat structure because the head noun student is on the same level in, in effect that it's dominated by a, um, a noun phrase that dominates all of its modifiers. So all of its modifiers are on the same level. They're all sisters, which in fact is what is predicted by the principle of modification. It turns out that when we probe this sentence a little more, we'll see that there's actually evidence that this flat structure does not represent the actual constituency of this noun phrase, and that there's intermediate structure between the noun phrase and the head noun. And in particular, we'll see that there's evidence that each of these modifiers is paired with the head noun 
in a particular way. So let's look at what that is. Remember, we have constituency tests that allow us to test for constituency, and we can show that this constituency is not sufficient. So let's take this sentence. I saw the tall student of physics with red hair, but not the short one with brown hair. This is an example of replacement. So what are we replacing? We're replacing the, um, the, the, the bit of structure that is student of physics and we're replacing it with the word one. Now if you look at this tree, this is not predicted by this tree. Because what we're doing is we're identifying student of physics, but that is not a constituent in our tree. It does not form a single unit. But the constituency trust of one replacement suggests it should be. So when we're replacing uh, student of physics with one, we're identifying student of physics as a constituent, which it's not represented in this tree. But it gets even crazier. It's not just that little pair. Let's take this sentence. I saw the tall student of physics with red hair, not the short one. So what's being replaced uh, by one? Students of physics with red hair. You'll notice that is also not a constituent in our tree. It gets crazier. I saw this tall student of physics with red hair, not that one. Here, one is replacing all of that structure and excluding the determiner. That, um, this, this is a real problem for us. If our tree structure is right, what are all these constituents that are not being represented? We have a proposal um, to, that we can explain this. It comes from work done by um, Chomsky and a linguist called Ray Jackendoff back in the early 1970s, that in fact, each of these modifiers is attached into the tree under what we call a bar level. Now the bar here, we, I've represented with an apostrophe, don't worry about that notation, that's just um, the standard way because it was easier to type in the old days um, an apostrophe than an actual bar or prime. But um, uh, what you'll see here is we have these three N bars. The N bars are intermediate structure inside of our noun phrase. And our modifiers, tall, of physics and with red hair are each attached into the structure. Now, in order to do this, we're going to mod have to modify our rules. We're going to need a rule that introduces the determiner at the very top, which pushes it to the left-hand side. And that rule says a noun phrase consists of a determiner followed by an n-bar category. Notice not an n, an n-bar. And then we have a rule that lets you attach adjective phrases and prepositional phrases in. Um, so it says n bar consists of an adjective phrase, an optional adjective phrase followed by an n bar, or an n bar followed by a prepositional phrase. This you'll see in a moment that this gives rise to um, the attachment of all those prepositional phrases and adjective phrases. And then we have a final rule which introduces the head noun which says n bar consists of an n followed by an optional prepositional phrase. This is, these three rules taken together will allow us to draw that tree that we just looked at. Notice that the second rule has an interesting property. It's internally recursive or iterative. It can apply as many times as needed. So you can Take an n-bar category and create a new n-bar category, create a new n-bar category, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This means you can, get, um, you can get as many of these adjectival and prepositional modifiers as you want. And that's a neat effect. And it actually allows us to get rid of the, plean, the clean plus that we had in our old rules. So you remember there was a little plus sign after the adjective and the prepositional phrase. Because this rule is internally uh, recursive, we can get rid of that plus. All right, and we can now state the rule that we had before 
that we saw in effect in those sentences we were looking at, which is, to, which is the one replacement rule, which says you can replace any n bar node with the word one. Um, notice it's not noun and it's not noun phrase, and we'll, that will become important in a minute. So the one replacement rule particularly targets this intermediate category n bar. Okay, so let's go back to those sentences we were talking about and look at how they fare with this more articulated, complicated tree. So one thing you'll note is that um, you can't replace just the n head. So you can't say the short one of chemistry with brown hair. That's because that what you would be doing is replacing that n head. Now, there is some dialectal variation here. So some people actually find this sentence okay. In that case, those speakers who have that dialect where this particular noun phrase is all right, you simply have a different one replacement rule. You have a one replacement rule that allows you to target n bar categories and n categories. Okay, let's look back at those sentences that we talked about before. So if you... Um, are replacing our whole noun phrase with the short one with brown hair, you're targeting that lowest n bar category. If you're saying the short one, then you're targeting the next n bar category up. And if you're just saying this one, you're replacing the n bar category on the very top. You can't replace the noun phrase that you can't just say one. So this structure predicts what the possible one replacement rules are, uh, one replacement um, options are. 